Good day and welcome to the channel. In this short video, we're going to explain the 10 things to look for in a microphone. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to, ex going to explain in layman's terms what microphone specifications actually mean. So you can look at this selection of microphones here and have some ideas to what you're buying and why it works for your application or why it doesn't work for your application. And before we get this list of 10 things, Let's very, very quickly explain what is a microphone. Well, you know when you're talking or when there's any sound, it's really just a wave that's going up and down and up and down, and that's what we hear. Well, a microphone is any device that converts that physical wave that's going through the air into an electric signal. In technical terms, it's an analog to digital converter. Okay, that's about as weedy as we're going to get. We're going to explain sample rate, frequency, range, USB versus mini DIN, uh, a condenser versus broadcast, uh, sound patterns, microphone efficiency, all of those things. So let's get through them so everybody understands what they're actually getting or what they're looking at. So let's blow off to Amazon. And by the way, this is a completely unsponsored video. Nobody has given us a penny, including Amazon. It's simply a matter of Amazon has a large list of products for us to choose from. Probably the most important thing to look for in a microphone is the sampling rate. And you will see that as 16-bit versus 24-bit. If you're ever looking at a microphone that doesn't have a specification, it's 16-bit. You want to avoid 16-bit microphones. 24-bit microphones sound a heck of a lot better and cost very little more. Okay, so what is 16-bit versus 24-bit? Well, it's not very complex. It's simply the number of times per second is the way we measure it, the number of times per second that the sound is sampled. Remember that a microphone's converting the analog sound wave, this blue line, to electric signals. Well, how often is it doing that? Well, 24-bit does it 50% more frequently than 16-bit. So it does a much, much better job. That's the first thing to look for. Look for a 24-bit mic, even on the cheapies. The mic I'm speaking to you on now is less than $30, Canadian, and it sounds pretty good. Number two on our list is the frequency response. It's really pretty simple. It's really how high and how low can the microphone pick up? Here's the thing to look for in a microphone. It's a mic that can sample 24-bit, 192 kilohertz. Why 192? Well, because it's way higher than what people can actually hear. So you can get higher rates, but as he says, no one can hear above 20 kilohertz. Most people can't hear above 15 kilohertz. And when you're old, 8 kilohertz isn't that uncommon. And as he says here, even remastered, you know, masterpieces, as some people claim, are still only done in 24-bit 192 kilohertz. That's a crazy high range, 192. Remember recording right now with, at this spec, 24-bit 96 kilohertz. That's the happy space for almost everything. The next thing to look for on our list, which is the, the third item, is the connector. So is it USB? Is it 3.5 millimeter? Is it a DIN connector? And the answer is, don't worry about it. Get it for whatever works for your particular application. The connector is not an indication of quality. Now, that being said, these DIN connectors are awful. The pins bend, and uh, there's a great quote from a guy here that says, uh, Mini DIN is an abomination and a disaster in practice when frequently used by people not committed to keeping connectors intact. So DIN connectors are not great. Number four on our list is condenser versus dynamic mics. Dynamic mics are also called broadcast mics, and that's what I'm going to call them. As far as mechanically goes, the difference is just in how they are constructed. Uh, we're going to avoid the weeds here and just leave it at broadcast microphones have a big magnet in the middle. And when the diaphragm on top moves up and down, it affects the magnetic field, and that's what gets converted into electrical energy. Condenser mic doesn't have that magnet. has a diaphragm and a backplate that captures the signal. And you think, okay, what do I care? Fair enough. Well, the short version is broadcast mics are called broadcast mics because they're used mostly in the broadcast industry. They have one big limitation and one big benefit. The limitation is that they don't capture the same range that condenser mics do. Condenser mics capture a larger range of audio, higher highs, lower lows. So you think they'd be better. Well, they are for home use, Broadcast mics are used in the broadcast industry because they're tough. You can mistreat them and they'll keep working. You don't want to mistreat your condenser mic, it'll have problems. So the bottom line here is both of them are fine. Condenser mics are probably better for home use, podcasting, things like that. Certainly collecting audio samples from music 
would be better through a condenser mic. Number five on our list is sound patterns. So you'll see a bunch of people talk about it's a cardioid mic. Cardioid mic is simply a directional mic. It's picking up sound from in front of the mic. That's the mic I'm using now. A figure eight mic would be good for things like, say, an interview where you've got, where you want a mic really on both sides. You want to hear sound from both directions. And then omnidirectional, of course, is a, you know, mic that picks up sound from all around. But they're not the only uh, patterns. There are these other patterns as well, which I'm just going to ignore for the minute because you can read. And almost everybody that's listening to this is going to want a cardioid mic or a bidirectional mic, also called figure eight mic. Number six on our list is how is it mounted? I mean, a mic just doesn't sit on the table. You want to get it off the table. And to do that, there's a couple of things. One, you could have a boom mic, right? Hanging on a boom. Number two, and this is the most common, of course, for most people, is just a little tripod. And you think, well, a tripod, okay, tripod's a tripod. Well, not quite. I've seen people try to explain that plastic is not as good as metal legs, and I think that's garbage. Sure, it's probably not quite as sturdy, but you know, if you're a standard home user, you're you know just doing podcasts and things, I don't think it makes any difference at all. But really what you're looking for with this is soft rubber feet. So I have actually purchased this microphone right here, which is about a $20 mic, and I returned it. One of the problems was these, uh, these little rubber feet are actually really hard plastic. You don't want the vibrations traveling from the physical plane that it's sitting on, the table or whatever, into the mic. You don't want the mic picking that up. Other than handheld mics like this one, most of them have some sort of a mounting screw at the bottom. So you could, this is actually the mic I'm using right here. Just unfortunately, it says sponsored. As I said, this is not sponsored from these guys or anybody else. This is completely unpaid explanation of specs. But you can see that there's a little screw in the bottom here, and that means I can move it on to other mounting uh, devices without any problem. Most mics have that. But look, if that's what you want to move it, if you want to move it around from a tripod, but you'll have to look for what you want if you want to move it at all. Maybe you don't. Next thing to look for are something called a pop filter or a pop screen. And really what that is, is just something that stands in front of the microphone. It's often called a sock. It's a, a little piece of foam that goes over top of the microphone. You can see here, there's this filter that stands in front. Uh, Moano has this one with a, it's a metal that stands in front. And you can see here, here's one that's uh, just a little foam head. And the purpose of that is to take harsh vibrations out of the mic. So if there's uh, something that crackles or whatever in the background, that foam or metal physical filter may deaden that spike. Number nine on our list of 10 things to look for are the controls and connections on the mic itself. So you can see here, this particular mic, you just tap on top to mute it. Whereas the mic I'm using, this PM461, by the way, I'll put a link in the top right hand corner of the full review of this particular mic. It only has a gain button, which is basically volume how much sound you want it to collect. This mic has a mute button. It also has the gain or volume, but here's something interesting. Uh, on the bottom, and we'll show you this in just a second, it also has a headphone jack, as well as an echo control button. If you want to put echo on it, so there's a little bit of you know depth to your voice, you can do that as well. Let's get into the uh, connection on the bottom here. What is this headphone jack about? It's called a monitor. And what that is, is uh, you can hear your voice uh, you know, as you're talking. So that tells you whether you're too loud or too far away or whatever. I have no use for that, but a lot of people love it. They think it makes them look professional. And the 10th and last thing to look for in our list of 10 things to look for in a microphone and the explanation of microphone specifications is the broad category of other. What else should you look for? Well, uh, there's a number of things. Firstly, uh, does it connect to cell phones? Does it connect to an Xbox? Does it connect to a PlayStation? Some of these things do, some of these mics do, some of them don't. If you care about that, that's something for you. There are what's called gaming mics, and most gaming mics simply have LEDs in them, and some of them change colors. This one, for instance, is called a USB gaming mic, and it's exactly the same mic as I'm using, except they've added some LED uh, lights in the background here, and these lights change, which is kind of cool, I guess, if you're a gamer and that's the kind of thing you're into. The problem with this particular mic is you can't turn that off, so it's kind of distracting. Other mics will have controls for that. This one doesn't. Brand reputation. Moano has a pretty good brand reputation. They make pretty good devices. Other mics, yeah, maybe not so much. So you're getting some of these cheap Chinese microphones. Yeah, maybe they're good and maybe they're not. But when you're looking at a $30 mic and you've got one with a brand and one without a brand, maybe the brand's the one to go with. And the very last the thing in the other category are things like 
what it's categorized for. It's a podcast mic, it's a gaming mic, it's a voiceover mic, it's a streaming mic. It's for Skype, it's for YouTube. Pretty much that means nothing. That does not tell you what the mic is. What that tells you is marketing. And probably not a lot of use to you, I would ignore those types of designations. Hey, if you found this video useful, we would really appreciate it if you'd give us the big thumbs up. The like is always appreciated. Subscribe, super helpful as well with the Google algorithms. And if you, hey, if you have any questions or concerns, you got two choices. Put them in the comment section below and either we'll get back to you or somebody else will. Or you can always get a hold of us here at www.urtech.ca. That's www.urtech.ca. Thanks and have a great day. Bye-bye.